Whether far or near, you'll see crystal clear. Yeah. You'll get hit by gamma rays to have a super pass. I'm a traditionalist when it comes to chicken. So we and... You might be wondering what the Emerging Architect Prize has to do with chicken. Succulent, delicious and crispy fried chicken. I was a kid who tried a bit of everything. Music and theatre, physics and chemistry. I even dabbled in learning automotive technology. It's a bit of a cliche, but the first time I saw Frank Lloyd Wright's Falling Water on TV, I became aware of architecture. I borrowed some books about organic architecture, took a CAD course, and not long after, I enrolled at the University of Tasmania in their architecture program. I loved learning about sustainable design. We were drilled on designing for everyone and working towards architectural outcomes that were accessible to people, especially when they couldn't write a blank check. My final project at uni was a complex designed to treat regional male Tasmanian farmers suffering depression and anxiety. I designed the facility underground with hidden entrances so these men could process their emotions away from prying eyes. The panel who assessed my work weren't sure if I should fail or get a high distinction, but some students privately told me after that they had suffered depression and my centre was exactly what they needed. After five years of study, I assumed I'd be leading a design team on some of Australia's new landmark projects, but I quickly realised I was only on the first rung of a very long career ladder. I had to cut my teeth drawing bathroom layouts and checking other people's documentation before I could earn the privilege of actually calling myself an architect. While I gained practical experience, I found a completely different outlet. I became a freelance voiceover artist after volunteering at a community radio station for a year. But there wasn't a need for voiceovers in architecture, so it would just be something that I would work on for my own enjoyment. Later on, I started working at Breathe Architecture, where every project we worked on focused on sustainability and energy efficiency. The expectations were high, but everyone in the practice was up for the challenge. There was a real sense of purpose. I worked with Eugenia Tan at Breathe, and she introduced me to a community group called New Architects Melbourne, or NAM for short. Members hold quickfire presentations about their work or their new firm's ethos. Everyone would stick around and after a few conversations, you'd have a renewed understanding that everyone was up against similar difficulties. When I looked at firms' work around the country, I never found a firm that overlapped in all three areas I was interested in. I decided to start my own firm so I could make this a reality and established Open Creative Studio. While I was drawing, I was listening to podcasts. I discovered the architects on Triple R, Talking Design, and of course, 99% Invisible. I realised that maybe my background in voiceovers might finally overlap with architecture via a podcast. So I decided to start a podcast for NAM called The New Architects Podcast. And three days after we released, we were at number 13 on Apple Podcasts Art Charts. I was encouraged by Monique Woodward to talk to the Australian Institute of Architects about producing a podcast for them. So I developed Hearing Architecture, a podcast about what architects do and why it's important. I was podcasting and designing buildings and had some clients come and go. And I realised that for many of my clients, the cost of a sustainable project was turning them away. I wanted to find a way to make sustainable architecture accessible to everyone but the traditional method of delivery was working against me. I was fortunate to have my parents as one of my first clients, and they kept all the sustainable initiatives in their house. After finishing the project, my dad asked me, what would you do differently if you had to do this again? At first I answered with a few material-based changes, but it was then that I realised it's such a waste not to build a high-functioning project again there's not a lot stopping architects from offering our plans to someone else. So I developed the patron model. The program offers architectural plans for sustainable houses for a fraction of the original cost it took to develop them and gives the clients who paid for the original plans a portion of the profits when they're sold again. I hope this makes sustainable homes more accessible to the community. 
With hindsight, I had more confidence at the beginning of my career than I deserved. But through leaning towards what I love to do, and a mix of failures and successes, I now have a career that is all my own. I've been able to design houses, interview some of Australia's best architects, and even do the voiceovers for chicken. Succulent, delicious, and crispy fried chicken. Of all the successful creatives I've met, few of them had a career that was a straight line. Maybe our careers will be as unique as we are, and we just need to access that space. Through trial and error, and a little bit of patience, I hope you all can find your space.